Salutations Crustaceans, I'm Lobster and today we're going to be reviewing the Fallout Base from the GNL Tribute Series. Let's do this. This is the Fallout from the G&L Tribute Series. That is their import line, where they also make a USA version of this base as well. But today we are checking out the Fallout from the Tribute Series. This is a very interesting base because it is catered towards people who want to play a short scale base but want full scale proportions. I'm not exactly sure who that is. However, that led to some very interesting design decisions. As you can see, the bridge itself is very pushed up and not towards the back of the body. That and the long headstock make this thing just as long as a Sire M5 four string bass, which is a 34 inch scale, 24 fret bass. This is a 30 inch scale, 19 fret instrument. So it is somewhat limited in terms of range and portability if you're going for a portable short scale bass. However, Styling wise, I think this is a pretty cool looking bass and it sounds great as well. This is essentially a short scale version of the L1000, a bass that we have featured multiple times on this channel and I love my L1000. This bass features a basswood body finished in a candy apple red with a white pearl pick guard or pearloid, whatever, uh, and a MFD magnetic field design pickup paired to a volume and tone control and a three-way toggle switch, giving you access to parallel, single coil, they say it's split, but it's not split, and OMG mode, which is a series with a capacitor on one of the banks of magnets. It's complicated and uh, it just gives you a perceived bass boost and it's a pretty meaty mood. <laughs> But anyways, overall, this is a pretty neat little instrument. The neck comes in either a maple or a Jatoba fretboard, and it's a maple neck. Nice neck overall. Fretwork wise, I've had no issues with the fretwork playing this instrument. And up at the headstock, you have a rather long headstock, which adds some length to the instrument. But the tuners are quite good. I've had no issues tuning up the instrument. There's no real dead spots or uh, unevenness when you're turning them. Uh, they're very responsive, so that is good as well. Let's go ahead and turn this instrument around and talk about the back of the instrument. Out back, there's not much because this is a passive instrument, 100% passive, just like the Stingray short scale. We are going to be doing a comparison video on this bass, the GNL Fallout, and the Sterling by Music Man Stingray short scale in an upcoming video, so be sure to keep an eye out for that. Anyways, out back, whole lot of nothing, and then you have a four screw neck joint here, which is pretty much all you need for a short scale instrument, especially a four string. Now while we're looking at the back of the neck, we can talk about the neck profile, which is a more, I guess, vintage style neck profile. There's a 41.3 millimeter nut width, and the profile is, uh, I wouldn't say chunky, but it's much more full than what you get from the Stingray short scale by Sterling by Music Man. That bass has a, I think, 36 or 37 millimeter nut width, much more akin to that of a uh, SUB or Ray 24. Uh, this is much meatier and much more akin to like a Mexican P bass. Now I know you guys are wondering, what does this bass sound like? You guys know what you need to do. Go ahead and pinch that like button so my hand will turn back to normal. Thanks. So one thing you notice right away putting this in your lap is with everything kind of pushed forward towards the neck, you do get a bit of neck dive in the lap. In a strap, this still might be a little neck divey, uh, only because I mean, look at where the strap point is in relation to the 12th fret. It's a little bit more uh, farther back than what you normally get. Uh, so take that for what you will. A, a good strap is usually the solution for neck dive anyways in most circumstances, unless you have like I don't know, a brick of lead or something at your headstock. So a strap matters as well, the type of strap that you're using. There's a lot of variables in terms of neck diviness and uh, how you perceive it. It's also like based on your frame. I mean, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. So we're, we're, we don't really wanna go there. We wanna talk about the base more than anything. And uh, again, in the lap, it is a little bit neck heavy. Um, that being said, 
it is a comfortable instrument and when you're resting your forearm up here, the cutaway is nice and you have nothing to worry about. Let's get to the plan. <laughs> This is a comfortable neck and it's easy to play for those who like the fatter neck profile. However, if you're expecting a skinnier, more jazz bass like profile, you're probably going to want to look elsewhere because this is a bit meatier. So as far as controls go, we have a master volume, a master tone, and a three-way toggle switch. And right now that is in parallel. The middle option is single coil, just like the L1000. And then you have OMG mode, which is essentially a bass boosty kind of thing done by adding some sort of capacitor or resistor. I don't, I don't know the specifics of the uh, OMG circuit. I haven't really looked into it that much. However, it does provide a very fat tone and we're gonna be looking at that in just a little bit. So let's go over all three different pickup configurations here. Let's do parallel one more time with the tone at 100%. <laughs> Next, we're going to take a look at single coil mode. So you do get a little bit of single coil hum in a noisy environment. That being said, it is what it is. You can always set it to parallel mode. It'll be dead quiet, but you don't get that character. Anyways, you have the option. Here's what this sounds like. And finally, here is OMG mode. Yeah, that is fat. OMG mode really adds a lot of meat. Meat. <laughs> now let's turn down the tone to about 50% and let's do it all again. Here's parallel mode. That's 50%. Single coil mode. And OMG mode. Finally, let's turn the tone all the way down, set it back to parallel, and check it out. Single coil mode. And OMG. Very nice. Now let's turn the tone all the way up, see how she slaps. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, this thing sounds really nice slapped as well. I'm a fan of the MFD pickup and I actually have some MFD pickups that I bought direct from GNL and I'm gonna do some experiments with those in the future. So keep an eye out for those videos as well. This thing though is a very nice sounding little package. Again, the proportions are kind of weird because it's like you're playing a full scale bass. Honestly, if the bridge was moved over like to the end of the body and the nut was moved maybe like an inch, this would be a 34 scale inch bass essentially. Like, <laughs> it's kind of weird that it's a short scale for people who like full scale instruments. It's a strange concept, but it's executed very nicely. So. I gotta give them props there. They made a specific claim about the instrument saying what it was designed for, the purpose, and I, I see it, it's there. So um, it's not a BS claim. This is clearly designed for people who like the uh, larger scale instruments. Anyways, let's go over to single coil mode, slap some more. <laughs> And finally, OMG. I'm gonna have to tread lightly here as OMG is a uh, powerful mode. It can easily overload some amps. Like, my, my amp doesn't like OMG mode, especially playing uh, real hard. So let's see what happens. <laughs> Very nice. Now, let's play with the pick a little bit. Here's parallel first. <laughs> Let's do single coil. As you can see, I'm, I'm getting a, a bit better with it now. I've been practicing just for you guys. Anyways, here's OMG mode. <laughs> Very nice. Now, let's throw some drums behind this bass. Thank you. 
So here are my final thoughts on the Fallout base from the GNL Tribute series. Honestly, I'm very impressed with the quality and fit and finish overall. They play great. They sound great. The only thing that really kind of irks me is just the ergonomics. But I see what they were going for. It just seems strange to me. This is much bigger than the Stingray short scale, both body size and just general proportions. And again, side by side with my Sire M5, which is a four string, 34 inch scale, 24 fret base. Uh, that's a, they're the same size. Actually, this is a smidge bigger. So that's kind of a big deal. Uh, a lot of people who are buying short scale bases are buying them either for the comfort in playing as well as the portability and the smaller size. And though this delivers in the comfortable playing, at least in my opinion, I don't find the fatter neck uncomfortable, though it may be a turnoff for people with uh, smaller hands, but I just think that the ergonomics are just weird here. And I personally don't think that it is necessarily the best uh, ergonomic choice, bringing everything forward. That being said, they did achieve their goal and it does feel like you're playing a full scale instrument, but you do have the short scale fretting and that is smaller and more comfortable. So that's cool. Um, the pickup, I love these things. They're really cool and parallel. OMG and single coil. Uh, however, again, if you're in a noisy environment, you will get some hum in OMG and single coil mode. The articulation of the controls is great. They don't feel cheap. And I really think the only downside to this instrument um, is the ergonomics. That being said, it's comfortable. I have no issues playing it and it's a great sounding bass. Pricing wise for $600, this is on the top end of the import short scale spectrum when it comes to instruments like this. You also have the Squire and Fender Mustangs. Um, I think the Fender is actually about $50 more than this. Um, you also have the Sire U5, which I rated five out of five for its $500 price tag and great number of features. And you also have the Sterling by Music Man short scale, which we will be comparing this to. And that is in at $550 US, I believe. So, this is on the higher end and again, isn't really the best short scale in terms of portability or size, but it is a great sounding instrument. It plays well um, and I think it's a great bass overall. So what am I gonna rate the GNL Fallout Tribute? Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and rate this bass. Four claws out of five. For an import version of their US counterpart, I think that GNL is doing a great job with the tribute line, at least with this one. This is the first tribute I've actually played, so it's good. The gripes I really have with this instrument are more in the design of the Fallout rather than this particular Fallout tribute. So um, take that for what it is. I think that the body is painted in a very premium looking way and you have the perloid pick guard, which makes it also look very flashy. I love this candy apple red finish. The maple neck feels nice and again, feels on par with that of the Sterling Music Man uh, Stingray in terms of materials, but it has the fatter profile. So if you're looking for a short scale bass with a little bit more meat to it, you should definitely check this one out. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching everyone. Be sure to like, subscribe, join our Discord, and I'll leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about the GNL Fallout Tribute. And as always, until we groove again.